Welcome to Radiologists, a podcast by University Medical Imaging Toronto, where we discuss the most interesting topics through the lens of Canada's largest medical imaging department. Today, our guest is Dr. Heidi Schmidt, Department Head and Program Medical Director of JDMI, the Joint Department of Medical Imaging in Toronto. JDMI is the largest medical imaging department in Canada with about 100 radiologists working under Heidi's leadership. Today, we are here to talk about what it takes to lead a successful medical imaging department. Heidi, it's great to see you here. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Satish. It's really great to be here today. So, first things first, what exactly does it feel like to lead Canada's largest medical imaging department? You know what? It feels like I've been entrusted with a huge responsibility and at the same time a huge opportunity to affect change in healthcare. And that together with my team, I can lead the field of radiology into the next decades, into the future in Canada. With that, I have a large group of radiologists working with me. And in the JDMI, all radiologists are peers. There is no hierarchy and the atmosphere is very collaborative with a truly democratic and shared decision making. We thrive from the input of radiologists from different backgrounds. Not only do they come from various different countries and cultures, they are also, for example, at different stages of their career. So on the one hand, I get advice from the young physicians who are just starting to change the world. And on the other hand, I get advice from those who have been practicing for a long time and bring their vast experience to the table. So it sounds like you have a very diverse team and that you're very, very proud of your team. Yes, that I am. I always feel that our radiologists are all academic, curious radiologists. Each and every single one of them wants to improve the field for the better care here in Toronto, in the province and outside of the country. Many of our radiologists, for example, are renowned researchers in their field. So from top to bottom of our bodies, they may have published from diagnostic imaging of the brain to novel neurointerventional procedures. They may be famous for novel imaging of the body, the musculoskeletal system, the heart and the lungs. They may be the first in many areas of functional and molecular imaging. And some of them are the only ones in the country who perform and also publish about certain interventional procedures. And you will hear from many of them in the upcoming podcasts. Another example of our outreach is somewhat closer to home. You may know that historically for an Ontario patient to have access to our radiologist, they would need to come to Toronto get their imaging done at one of our institutions, and then one of our radiologists would report the imaging or do the interventional procedure. Some patients, such as those residing in northern Ontario, had to travel long distances to see us. To improve access to radiology care, about four years ago, we started a collaboration with Health Sciences North in Sudbury, Ontario. So by now, a large number of our radiologists report on images obtained in Sudbury from their offices in Toronto through a direct network connection. At the same time, some of our radiologists are traveling north regularly to provide local care and to collaborate with the hospitals on site at Health Sciences North. So now I can proudly say that the patients of the North have the same high-quality radiology care that they would have had otherwise received only in Toronto. That's fantastic that you're not only fostering excellence in Toronto, but bringing it to the communities in the North to improve healthcare as a whole. That's amazing. So how exactly is your team structured? 
in short, complicated. Um, in more longer description, there are several layers of leadership structure that we have in, um, in our radiology group. So first and uh, foremost, it's based on our professional subspecialties. We are divided into seven divisions and each of the divisions is led by a division head, one of the radiologists. These seven divisions are neuroradiology, breast imaging, cardiovascular and thoracic imaging, abdominal imaging, musculoskeletal imaging, molecular imaging, and last not least, vascular and interventional radiology. The second layer of our uh, leadership structure is presented by the fact that we as the radiologists work at several hospitals. We are covering the hospitals of UHN or University Health Network, which are Toronto General Hospital, Toronto Western Hospital and the Princess Market Cancer Center. And we are covering Women's College Hospital and Sinai Health. Each of those five sites is led by a site director who again is one of our radiologists. And the final layer in our complex leadership structure are the functional heads. Radiologists who lead different departmental activities and these are for example research, artificial intelligence, the business of radiology, education, IT, quality and safety, innovation or faculty development. Oof, that's quite a large team to manage. But how do you ensure that they're all happy? So recently a term quiet quitting is making the rounds on social media and apparently what it means is that people lose motivation that they do bare minimum at the job. How do you make sure everyone stays engaged and that everybody's voices are all heard? Well, that is a very valid question and it is indeed a constant challenge. So I do have monthly meetings with the larger leadership team I just described, with the division heads, the site directors and the functional leads. Also, uh, although it's agenda driven, it often takes form of an open discussion and we are able to share our concerns and experiences. This is also my advisory group for any issue that may have a larger impact, such for example, how to deal with the post-pandemic recovery. And then the division heads communicate any further discussions or decisions with the rest of the team. With most of the leaders in that group, I also have regular one-on-one -on -one meetings, focusing more on their respective portfolios. I also meet with the new recruits shortly after they start to make sure that they are happily integrated uh, in the beginning. Um, I do meet with those radiologists who had a recent success, could have been a research success or any kind of award they have received. And then finally, it's also part of my job to meet with those who are struggling one way or the other. And unfortunately, I do have to follow up on complaints as well, but that doesn't happen too often. So that would get me to about, let's say, three quarters of the radiologists. And I am fully aware that there is a silent group that is more difficult for me to reach. Maybe it's a lame excuse to play that on the size of my group or on the fact that we are working at different hospital sites. But, you know, at least I am aware of it and I try to break the silos as much as I can. So I do have an open door policy, which means when I'm in the hospital and I'm not occupied with a meeting, my door is always open and everybody is welcome to stop by. And they do, or rather they did before the pandemic. Um, at the same time, I do make a point of walking through the department on the way to or from my office in the middle of the day. And that also, of course, worked better before the pandemic than now. But I'm looking forward to restarting all of that very soon. So speaking of the pandemic, the pandemic has been completely unprecedented in how it has disrupted so many organizations in so many different ways. So how has it affected your team specifically? So to start with, um, for many of the radiologists, it changed where we are working. We did a survey before the pandemic, um, about a quarter of our radiologists had a fully functioning reporting workstation at home, and they mainly used it for on-call coverage. By now, two years or a little bit more into the pandemic, all of the radiologists have a complete reporting workstation at home and an increasing amount of their diagnostic reading is done remotely from their home offices. 
This process will need to be corrected as soon as the pandemic restrictions are fully lifted because radiologists should be on-site available for ad hoc consults, for meetings and also for teaching residents and fellows. Um, the meetings have become virtual and that has been a huge benefit to a certain extent. So remember our multi-site structure where um, um, staff trainees may work at different hospitals it's now much easier for all of them, all of the radiologists, residents or fellows, to join rounds or join lectures while they are stay at their hospital site where they're scheduled on the day. That comes as an expense though. Our individual human interactions, the conversations before and after the meetings, the small talk about personal life, getting to know each other, as well as the ad hoc brief discussions about patient matters, they're all missing. So I'm really looking forward to, as I said, correct it, um, to be able to meet again with my team in person and talk about both professional as well as casual events. In the end, I think we will end on a hybrid form of meetings with a possibility for remote access for those who really cannot join in person. It is absolutely true that the pandemic has been isolating. But in addition to the lack of in-person communication, what are some of the other challenges that your team has faced? Uh, so, well, I mean, we are still dealing with the challenges resulting from the pandemic. So, for example, the huge backlog of exams. We already had long wait times before the pandemic for elective exams, and this has just been exacerbated during the pandemic. So to be a little bit more efficient with our imaging, we, for example, have changed some of our imaging protocols, decreasing the time a patient would need to spend in an MRI for a standard exam, which means it would allow more patients to have access to our MRIs. What's also changed is the focus on wellness and the emphasis on the work-life balance for the radiologists, which all has become increasingly important. In our group, we've worked hard on facilitating um, prolonged vacation times, more flexible working environment arrangements, flexible working times, whatever an individual radiologist may need to adapt to their home situation or to deal with their personal chronic stress. By the way, not only during the pandemic, this is one of the great advantages of being a radiologist who can always work flexibly and adapt to any kind of work-life balance. It's wonderful that you have emphasized flexibility to counter the stress and burnout caused by the pandemic. One of the other issues which was brought about by the pandemic has been the great resignation. So I assume that the pandemic has also emphasized the importance of talent retention in your group. Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, I already mentioned that we really try to accommodate everyone's specific requests as much as we can. But unfortunately, our hands are tied in certain ways, including what we can do in terms of retention. So, for example, we lost two fantastic radiologists from abroad who were very happy working with us. But with the start of the pandemic, they realized that they couldn't visit their families and their home countries as often as they used to. And also their families couldn't visit them as often as they would have liked. So the world really had become more distant and it became larger during the pandemic. And with that, they did unfortunately feel the need to go back and work closer to home. But I see that even with the pandemic, your team has always been ever expanding. So how do you approach talent recruitment? We do recruit talent from both within, which means from our pool of residents and fellows, as well as externally through national and international job postings. All of our vacancies are posted in nationally and international forums or in journals. If we do recognize a stellar candidate amongst our trainees, we do encourage them to apply and we would consider hiring them early if they were to be selected. Both the University of Toronto and the University Health Network as a hospital for years now have been on top of the best in the world. And I also mentioned earlier that we have many renowned radiologists in our group and we are all able to collaborate with, again, many world leaders in the various clinical departments in our hospitals. With that structure come opportunities for collaboration in all areas, from clinical care to research to teaching and education. 
So Toronto is really the perfect ecosystem for radiologists, for those who don't just work from nine to five, for those who are not the quiet quitters that you just mentioned, for those who want to challenge the status quo and want to improve and change the field of radiology and the healthcare of the future. This gets us to our ongoing branding initiative. I believe that our new website, our presence on social media, and this current content campaign will reach widely and will facilitate the recruitment of high-level applicants from all over the world. Indeed, you've built a website focusing on your team and also started a major content campaign. Aren't radiologists stereotypically the quiet type? So why was it important now to have this content campaign? Well, I agree with you. Radiologists are the quiet type and they're also sometimes the hidden professionals and not really um, visible to the patient. So which all makes it even more important to start this major content campaign. I think it's important for me to highlight this team of radiologists. I want the world to know who we are. The affiliation of our radiologists may be aligned with more than one hospital and crosses numerous specialties. And also don't forget, we are all affiliated with the University of Toronto. We have spider legs in many areas, but I want to make sure that everybody knows that the body of our spider is us. And I think that needs to be emphasized. And also, I do realize if I want to have a radiology group of the 21st century, I have to keep up with the digital marketing trends. And that's why we outsource this task and perform it in a professional manner. Heidi, your role is fascinating that it has so many different facets. So one moment you're responding to a patient feedback, the next moment you're with the CEO of the hospital, and the next moment you're deciding on digital marketing. So how do you balance it? Well, it has to be organized. <laughs> so my calendar is actually color coded for the different tasks, whether it's a patient related uh, meeting entry or organizational, whether the meeting is on site or remote, all my calendar entries have different colors. So I can look at my calendar from a distance and I know exactly what my day will look like. I live by my calendar. What's in my calendar gets done. What's not in my calendar may get forgotten. At the same time, I have to make sure that my organizational focus or skills don't make me rigid. So since I started this position as department head and program medical director, I really can't recall a single day that exactly paved out the way how it was supposed to be. There are always meetings that are ad hoc, that are meetings that are getting cancelled, there are urgent issues to address. And let's also not forget, uh, like I mentioned earlier, my door is always open and there will always be a surprise guest coming by. My day is really predictable for the first hour or so. And then with all my organizational skills and with my calendar entries, I make, have to make sure that I remain flexible because I may have to address something that I really didn't expect to happen. But then on the other hand, this unpredictability is really exciting. I have the opportunity to improvise. There's always something new. It's versatile and it's never boring. It's amazing that you embrace the unpredictability. Not only that, you actually seem to enjoy it. But what are the sacrifices you had to make by taking up this role? Do you miss clinical work as a radiologist? Oh yes, I do miss my clinical work. I became a radiologist for a reason. I love images, I always did. So being a chest radiologist, I still make sure that I read chest CTs or chest X-rays as much as I can. And I'm also participating in on-call duties. And I don't only do that because I like it and I miss it. I also feel that I need to be able to chip in conversation with my radiology colleagues. So if uh, I hear complaints about increased workload or a new software that comes with different challenges, I want to be able to say, yes, I experience it too and I share your pain. Or I'm able to say, well, there's a workaround and there's an improvement that you may not know about which means I really want to be actively participating in conversations that my clinically practicing radiologists are having. Well, as they say, a good leader always has one foot on the ground. So Heidi, what advice would you like to give to the younger radiologists and aspiring leaders of the future? I think we can narrow it down to two major pieces of advice. So one is 
don't plan too far ahead. Don't have a 10 year plan. You will definitely be wrong and you will be disappointed for not having achieved it. Having a plan for longer than five years makes you inflexible. And secondly, don't say no to an opportunity. If an opportunity presents itself, even if completely unexpected, take it. I don't recall a single time in my entire li life when I would have said no to an opportunity. <laughs> That's, by the way, also the reason why I'm here right now. In early 2018, I was asked to step in as the interim radiologist in chief. And like with all of the opportunities, I went for it. Two years later, by the time the permanent position was posted, I had started so many initiatives, I had started to implement changes that I thought it would be a real shame if I didn't see them through. So I applied for the position and got it. So here I am. And maybe if you allow me a brief message for medical students who may right now be choosing their future field, consider how cool and amazing radiology is. So for once, there isn't a single patient, except maybe for some exceptions from psychiatry, who would make it through their healthcare journey without at least one exposure to radiology exams. You will see so many different pathologies. You will work with different uh, great colleagues, not only within radiology, but also collaborating with other specialties. You can achieve a great work-life balance, and you can focus on your passion, whatever it is, clinical care, research, or educating our next generation. Thank you so much, Heidi. It was a pleasure and privilege to have this chat to talk about the challenges you face, the hurdles you overcome, and your unique approach to leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Dr. Heidi Schmidt, Department Head and Program Medical Director of JDMI, the Joint Department of Medical Imaging in Toronto, and me, your host, Satish Krishna. You were listening to Radiologists a podcast by University Medical Imaging Toronto, the largest medical imaging group in Canada. Produced by Inna Levchuk. Learn more about us at universitymedicalimagingtoronto.ca and follow us on social media at Imaging Toronto. Thank you, everybody. See you on the next one. <laughs>